Hi everyone, this is Lori with Med Made Easy. I want to talk about a topic that is something that if you're a medical professional or student in the medical field, you are most likely going to come across many, many times in your career. Congestive heart failure is the topic that I want to talk today and I want to give you some info tips that you need to know as a medical provider. Let's start with some signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure, specifically a an exacerbation of heart failure. Or when you're thinking about um, signs and symptoms of a CHF exacerbation, that different people have, you need to look at their baseline. That's super important. Um, you, one of the first things you see here is shortness of breath. Now, this person may always have a little bit of shortness of air, or what we call dyspnea on exertion, when someone's moving and they get more short of breath. Um, so look at their baseline and ask the patient, hey, are you more short of breath than normal? They may also have orthopnea. A lot of these patients, you'll hear them tell you about how they sleep in the recliner, and they do it for that reason because um, when you have congestive heart failure, a lot of times when they start laying down, they'll get more short of breath, almost feeling like they're drowning somewhat. They may complain about sudden weight gain as well. Um, they may say, oh, I had 10 pounds in a week or whatever like that. So definitely that's something to pay attention to. Um, and then chest discomfort. A lot of times they may complain even of chest pain so the next thing to consider as well is the physical exam part of someone in overload. Some things to look at that you may find on someone who is in exacerbation of congestive heart failure. Look at the jugular vein. Um, those are often distended. We call that JPD. Um, they may have wheezes or crackles, rails that you notice upon auscultating their lungs. Of course, the extremity swelling, as we explained. They may have an S3 heart sound, which that's something that is a little bit hard to pick up if you're new and still learning your heart sounds. But this is basically a third heart sound with a very low intensity, and it's usually heard in early diastole. The other thing is ascites. This isn't one that we talk about very often, but sometimes I've had patients who have actually been in a congestive heart failure exacerbation, and their belly is actually, uh, they have ascites. So that's something that we don't think of often, but it can happen when they're in exacerbation. Let's talk about another um, thing about um, heart failure. A lot of times these individuals, most times they're going to be on something like Lasix if they can tolerate it. Now, if they're on Lasix, they usually need to be on potassium as well. That's super important. It's very rare that I ever not see someone on Lasix not on potassium as well. As you know, when you take Lasix, it makes you pee more and so thus your potassium and some of your other electrolytes can decrease as well. It's important to keep the electrolytes in balance and in normal ranges because it can cause arrhythmias and other problems with the heart. Moving on to the next info tip about congestive heart failure, Lasix and the kidneys. Now because these individuals with heart failure do take Lasix, it's important to recognize that the renal function may need to be monitored. Lasix can affect the kidneys. Um, and often, you know, sometimes we may see a decline in kidney function and the Lasix may need to be adjusted and even sometimes held, especially if in the hospital setting, if, you know, they're not in overload and they're having issues, but the kidneys and the heart are interconnected, so a lot of things can happen, so it can be very uh, catch-22 in these situations. The next info tip, this is something that patients need to understand. If they have a weight gain of two to three, the standard is two to three pounds, weight gain in a day or five pounds in a week that they need to call their doctor, they need to be seen, especially if they're having signs and symptoms of shortness of air. The next tip here is about an echocardiogram. Now the echocardiogram is very helpful because one of the things that it can give us is about how well the heart is functioning in general and it gives us a number, and it's called ejection fraction, it's actually a percentage and a normal a normal range of injection fraction is usually 50 to 55 percent and it kind of varies when it's under 50 percent it's considered abnormal. Now the ejection fraction is a measurement of the percentage of the blood leaving your heart every time it contracts. This is something that if you think about what the heart does, it's a machine, a well-oiled machine, when it, um, it's in the systolic phase it's contracting to push out the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. When it's in the diastolic part, it's relaxing and the blood is filling the ventricles. Now it goes through the cycle, your heart goes through the cycle over and over again in order to get this oxygenated blood to the body. So when you hear ejection fraction, that's really talking about the left ventricle 
um, part. And that's something that's very useful when it tells us how well the heart is basically pumping out that blood. And we use that a lot of times to see where a patient is at um, in their heart failure. Now some things that can cause a lowered ejection fraction, things like weakened heart muscle, damage, heart, like in um, the case of like heart attack, and then of course any issues with heart valves or uncontrolled blood pressure that's very stressing and taxing on the heart. Now let's talk about, talk about the typical orders that you're going to see with a patient who has congestive heart failure whether or not they are an exacerbation. Um, if you're new to nursing or the medical field in general, you can see here is a list of a few. I think the only one I don't have on here is oxygen. Um, and there may be a few others, and I'm, I'm just not thinking them right now, but those are basic important ones. Daily weights, accurate INOs, a BMP, um, Lasix. If they're an exacerbation, they get that off in the ER, even if they're already on a dose of Lasix at home. Cardiology consult, uh, I like to have them on board. And of course, monitoring their electrolytes. I do that usually every AM, and of course, upon admit, their electrolytes, especially the potassium, magnesium, um, definitely those are things to watch out. And then, of course, another important order is the oxygen. These patients often need oxygen as well. They may have baseline oxygen that they, they wear, but generally, if they're in the exacerbation, they may need a little bit more. An echocardiogram is another order I wanted to add. Usually, um, if they haven't had one in six months, I like to get one um, just to have an idea of what their heart function is looking like. And finally, last but not least, I want to go over some of the causes of heart failure exacerbation. A couple of things that help you to basically generalize this is think about three different things. Anything that damages the heart makes the heart work harder and or causes fluid retention in the body has the ability to cause an acute exacerbation. Now see, you see here a list of different things and when you think about those three things I just talked about, try to see which, if you can figure out which ones that these each fall into, which category. An important thing to remember about this list is that each one of these three things are intertwined. Anything that can damage the heart can make the heart work harder Anything that can cause fluid retention can also make the heart work harder and it can also damage the heart. So they're all, that's how you can see that they're all intertwined and that will make more sense when you start thinking about the different causes of heart failure and exacerbations of heart failure. Now let's look at a list here of some different causes and or things that contribute to congestive heart failure exacerbations. As you're looking at these lists, keep in mind those three things, those three basic concepts about what causes an, an exacerbation. You can see here, let's look and see if we can just find one to figure out what it does to the heart. Now let's look at myocardial infarction and use these three, these three ways of looking at what can cause heart failure. Anything that can damage the heart. Myocardial infarction can obviously damage the heart. Let's look at another one. Increased salt intake. Which one of these different main causes can you think that this goes under? If you guessed causes of fluid retention, you guessed correctly. Let's try one more from the list. Valvular issues. Which one of these three things do you think that valvular issues falls within first? If you guessed makes the work makes the heart work harder, you guessed correctly. Well everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. That lets us know that you find this helpful and you want us to make more videos that are similar to this. And also head on over to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button, and stay tuned for more videos from Men Made Easy.